YTBC, this is your boy Coach Shelton Harris. And guys, this is not a boxing video. I'm going to, kind of, this is an addendum to a video that I made maybe eight months ago. And basically, this is what you do, guys, when you have a traffic stop, a police encounter. You see, a lot of us guys, we get pulled over for reasons that, you know, some reasons are valid. And some reasons, most of the time, they're not valid at all. And you're sitting back in your vehicle and you're wondering, you know, what in the world did I do to get pulled over? That's what you'd be thinking. But guys, I'm going to go in this quick. These are things you need to do. First of all, I'm going to tell you how to survive a police encounter. And then I'm going to tell you how to get out of a ticket. I'm going to tell you exactly how to get out of, out of a ticket. I don't care if you ran a red light. I don't care if you got a speeding ticket. I'm, I'm going to tell you how to get out of that ticket. And that's just the way that is. Okay, so the first thing, guys, when the police pull you over, and you know for a fact that it's you, the first thing you do, okay, you hurry up and pull over. You pull over quickly. Now, if you're in like an area, you know, you want to always pull over in a well-lit area. So what you do is you cut on your, your hazard lights, okay? And that will signify to the police that, you know what, you're going to a well-lit area. I didn't know that. But you cut your hazard lights on, you cut them on, and you go to a well-lit area, man. And you don't even speed up, don't speed up the car, don't do anything. They may even order you to pull over beforehand, but it's within your, you can go to a safe well-lit area. You cut your hazard lights on, and you roll to that area, and then, you know, you finally pull over. And when they ask you, you just say, you know, I wanted to get to a well-lit area to protect me and protect you. And see, they'll appreciate that, okay? The first thing you need, the first couple things you need to do, you need to get this app on your phone. And it's the, it's, it's, it's a ACLU, okay? It's an app. And as soon as you know you're being pulled over, you cut that app on, and it immediately begins to record this police encounter for you. It'll do it for you download the app it's called the aclu app okay you get it you hit that play button and immediately the whole context of the police pull over it, it, it's pulled over i mean it's amazing man what this thing can do but you know go get the app okay you cut that app on second you put all your you put your driver's license everything up here on the dashboard all your information license or registration put it up on the dashboard and third you keep your hands on the steering wheel you do not move your hands. I don't care what you think you got to do. I don't care if you got to scratch your behind. Don't take your hands off that steering wheel and have all your information up there, okay? The fourth thing that you do before you get pulled over, okay, because you don't want to move your hands, you roll the window down about a quarter of the way. And here, let me show you the window. Let me try to drive and show it. See, the window is down about a quarter of the way. Now, why do I say a quarter of the way and not halfway? The reason why I say a quarter of the way because he can't stick his big nose in your window and say he smell marijuana. Or he can't say he really smell anything in your car. Because if he can't stick his nose in there, he really can't say it. But see, the majority of the time, if you roll your window all the way down, they can stick their head or their nose part, part way in the window to where they can say they smell something. They'll ask you, have you been drinking? And then they'll ask you to step out the car. See, your goal with a police encounter is to not get, pulled, get stepped out of the car. You don't want to get out the car because when they pull you out the car, then it's like they go into a searching mode. Man, I know the police like the back of my hand. They go into a search mode, and they're actively, they're looking for something to get you on. When they tell you to step out your car, you pretty much better believe that they're looking to arrest you. Okay? Don't do anything suspicious, man. Just, you know, roll it down. Now, if he asks you, you know, why do you have the window up? I always say, you know, it's kind of hot, and I got the air conditioner on, and, you know, I just, I, you know, it's, it's hot. Or if it's cold, I tell them, you know, I got the heat on. You know, I'll make up anything. Now, they may tell you to roll the window down. Now, by law, they can't physically make you roll your window all the way down. They can't. But you see, the thing of it is, though, go ahead and comply with the order. Roll the window down. Because, see, you know, you better off, man. Because if you don't roll the window down and they're telling you to roll it down, see, you're going to escalate the situation. Just roll it down. Go ahead and roll it down and say, sir, you know, can, can I my button right there? I just need to roll it down. But you keep one hand on that steering wheel. You never take your hands out of plain sight. I don't care, man. What do he tell you? Don't take your hands out of sight. Because them dudes, man, they trigger happy. All right. So I done, I done covered a couple of things. The next thing you do, you, you remain calm. I don't care if he's telling you that you were speeding and you really know you wasn't speeding. Stay calm. Because as soon as you catch your attitude, they're going to ask you to step out the car. People, that, that's just the way that is. They're going to ask you to step out of the car if you start escalating the situation with an attitude. Man, don't get no cop no attitude. Look, man, you literally, you play the game. You say yes, sir, no, sir. If they disrespectful to you, this what you do. See, you can't beat them on the street. 
you can't beat you can't beat a police officer on the street. That's his domain. That's his territory. You ain't gonna win. You're gonna lose every single time. What you say is okay, and then you take him to court if he do something out of hand. You take him to court. And if they ask you, you know, I want to search your car. Man, you say, look, you can't search this car. You ain't got no warrant. And you tell them that. I don't care what they tell you. I don't care if he tell you that, you know, if you don't let him search the car, he going to do this. He can't do nothing because he don't have any constitutional rights to do it. I mean, you tell him point blank, uh, no, you can't search this car. Are you crazy? And if they ask you, what are you hiding? I ain't hiding nothing. I just don't, you ain't searching my car. You're not finna tear my car up and throw my stuff all around. And then, you know, then I got to be the one clean up the stuff. Nah, man, you ain't finna do that. Nah, you don't let these dudes, man, nowhere near you. Matter of fact, you know, if they ask you, can, can they search you? That, hell no. <laughs> no. That's a heck no. They can't search you. And you tell them they ain't searching you. Now, they might go ahead and do it anyway. That's cool. That's cool. Let them. But then, see, what you do is you get your day in court with them. See, you can sue these guys. And if you got that app running, that ACLU app, pretty much, man, you got them right by the testicles. Anything you want to do and say, man, you got them. Because what are they really going to do? They can't deny it because you got it all on camera. And don't tell them that you got that app running. Don't tell them. You record the conversation. You record everything. That ACLU app, that it would, would, without a shadow of a doubt, it'll record every single thing that's going on. It will. You just lay it up on your dashboard. It'll, it'll do the rest. That's all you do. Put everything up there. Okay? Don't let them search the car. Don't let them go in there. I don't care if he tell you he's going to get the dog. So, get them. Because they don't have any right. See, when the officer understands that you do know your constitutional right, when they know that you know that, a lot of times they'll think twice before they're trying to violate you. They will. Now, you may do all the things that I described. You may do everything but they still give you a citation don't even worry about getting a citation because see what you do man you go in your county where you live at you go see the district attorney and basically you stand in a long line but it's worth it you stand in this line and you tell them you know hey i need this i need this reduced can i get this thrown out because you know what the da's they got so many of these traffic citations that they're trying to get rid of them but see, people, they don't go up there. They just go and they just pay it. They'll go pay it. And what they do is they don't even think about it because, you know, you committed a crime, you know, and everybody, you know, you, you were speeding. You know, you ran a red light. I mean, it's not anything you don't know, but they got so many of these tickets, y'all. And I found this out because a friend of mine is an attorney. She told me they got so many of these darn tickets, man. They can't. They trying to process them all because, you know, it costs money, man, when you got to go to court. Because all those tickets, man, you got a court date and you got to show up. That costs money. So the DAs would rather throw these tickets out or have them reduced so the fines are a lot lesser, man, so you can, they can just get them out off their books. Like, they, they want these tickets out of there. These DAs for these traffic, man, they overworked as it is. So, man, they ain't got the time. You make a little trip. You take maybe two hours out of your day. And you make a trip down there, man. You talk to the DA. You tell them, look, you know, I got this resolved. Or, you know, um, I need this reduced. Because sometimes officers, man, you can be going 12 in a, in a, you can be going 12 miles over in a 45. And you can get it reduced down to like, you know, like eight, eight miles over. And if you get it reduced down to eight miles over, man, then basically what it is, is that the ticket cost, man, is reduced. You don't even have to go to traffic court and you don't even get points on your license, man. Really and truly. See, going down there, man, I'm telling you, it does a whole great deal. Now, what if that don't work? What if you go down to the DA, you talk to them, and don't none of that stuff work? Okay, you take you about $250 and you get a traffic attorney. Guys, that's better than getting points on your life. See, you, you can always get out the ticket. They'll keep getting you out. They'll tell you, well, if you keep getting these tickets, then we ain't going to be able to get you out. Yeah, they can. That's what they get paid to do. You take $250, you pay an attorney, man. They'll go to court for you. You ain't even got to show up to court. They'll go for you. They will go and sit there and battle that. You won't even have no points. You won't, you won't have anything. They will completely get the ticket out of your system. Okay? Look, that's $250 to me that's worth it. Because when you get points on your license, man, you know, they be trying to increase your insurance by another $100 a month, man. And you got to look at the, the benefits outweigh the risk when, when you go get an attorney. They'll completely clear it up because they'll send you stuff in the mail. They'll send it to you. And they don't send it to you unless they know 
that they can actually expunge the tickets for you. And that's what they do. They, they get rid of those tickets. So they're out of your system. You might go on like on a probation period. Like you can't get another ticket for like two years or something like that. But, you know, you, your insurance don't go up and all you got to do is drive like you got some sense. Okay. And a lot of times, man, I be trying to tell people, stop arguing with these cops, man. Because, you know, most of the time they'll come up to you, man. And they, if you don't even give them attitude, a lot of times, man, they'll give you the lowest speed limit that you can get. Because most of the time, man, I'm, honestly, I always usually get out the ticket. The one, the worst ticket I got, I was going 30 miles over, man. Like, it was crazy. I was, it was 55 and I was going 85. And really and truly, this officer, man, he should have, you know, he, he, he could have took me in right then and there, but he didn't. Because I had my hands on the steering wheel, I had my stuff all out on the dashboard, and I had the window quarter the way down. See, everything was right there. So this guy already knew, man. He said, oh, okay. He said, do you work uh, for, you know, he said, are you a law student or something? Yeah, that's what he asked me. And I said, nah, man, I just know that you guys got a tough job, and I know it's hard, man, when you pull somebody over, man, to stress like See, I started talking to him like that. And he said, oh, well, you know, I appreciate that. Thank you. And then he came back and said, listen, man, let me tell you what I'm going to do for you. He said, I'm going to charge you with, you know, you going eight miles over the speed limit. And he said, basically, if you and he told me, he said, if you go to the D.A., they may even throw it out. And sure enough, man, the officer was right. They threw it out. Why? Because they don't man. Look, they ain't trying to deal with these tickets, man. These guys got bigger things to do than traffic tickets. They do. So they threw the ticket out. He just told me, man, D.A. looked at me, said, OK, um, I'm going to throw it out. All right. Have a good day. That's it. That's all I had to do. So you guys tell me what you think about this. This is your boy, Coach Shelton Harrison. I'm done.